Hello and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3. I'm Lord Formand, and here with another game guide. This time we're going to be talking about religion reforms. Um, this is a very heavily requested topic by a lot of people, so we're going to go over that. So um, it's important to note, and I'm going to go over some of the basic concepts behind reforming a religion before getting into what traits to do and how to do it better. Um, but it's important to note there are two types of religions in this game. There are the organized faiths, stuff like this, that is a religious hierarchy. And then there's all the, what would be considered pagan in Crusader Kings 2, basically the unreformed faith. You can turn unreformed into reformed. I don't think you can turn reformed organized faith into unreformed ones. So we'll go over that. Uh, it's important to note that this conveys some significant advantages being organized. Uh, you can actually you can actually become feudal, which is the big reason why if you're playing as a non-organized religion, you want to become organized pretty quickly. Now, before we get into that, though, uh, I'm going to point out something else that's important. And that is one can look up other faiths in this game. You can click on a faith like Catholicism and do convert to faith. Once you have enough piety, you can change religion. So if you want to get to an organized religion, this is actually a much easier way of doing it than reforming your own religion. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, there are also certain doctrine-specific traits that only certain religions can get. Um, and I'll go over those in a little while. So in order to form the religion, you have to meet the reformation requirements. Let's just I know people don't like me going over these, but let's go over these to make sure it's clear. You need at least three holy sites, you need a good amount of faith, and you have to change your tenets and doctrines, which means I have to actually alter this religion in some ways in order to reform it. How you determine your holy sites, you go up here under your religion, holy sites. Also show up when you're on the holy map mode if you click on your religion. And each holy site gives different advantages, so I recommend you try and pick up good ones. This one's pretty useful if you're playing as uh, Buddhism. Pretty good. So, reforming a religion is basically a whole lifetime focus for one ruler. I mean, you have to get all the three holy sites, but then once you do that, you need a massive amount of faith. And you need a lot of faith if you want to reform it into something even resembling Catholicism, for example. Catholicism is a relatively reformed faith, got good traits, got pretty good... Uh, doctrines and everything else but uh it's a whole lifetime investment uh if you go watch my i think it's my poland let's play i've just reformed the religion that took a person's lifetime he had to get into like his 70s i think he took over when he was in his late 20s early 30s it took him 40 years to be able to reform a religion so it's not something easy to do ideally you want a ruler that is like zealous and stuff because you get the anything that gives you extra piety you want so, how does one get all of the piety needed to reform the religion? Well, there are several ways to do it. Um, the most obvious one is get a good piety-focused ruler, go to learning, and go down the theologian tree. Specifically, you want this one right here, named the Prophet. Faith and Reformation cost minus 50%. That cuts the cost to reforming in half. If you didn't do that, trying to reform a religion would be nigh on impossible. Um, if you go further down here to Defender of the Faith, you get additional piety as well, as well as when you do Theologian. So if you go down this tree, um, you're going to be getting a lot of piety. However, there is the risk of going down this tree that you don't live long enough to actually reform the religion, in which case I recommend you actually go down the whole of body to probably healthy or even whole of body before you start going down towards profit. I haven't found a great advantage to going all the way down defender of the faith and theologian um, you could probably do it if you start with a really young like 20 or younger ruler focus on that also here you want to take the theo theology focus one piety a month is really really good you have that for multiple years we take that that would add an additional one to our uh, piety gain the other thing to do is look at what your virtues are for your government or sorry for your religion so like if this person was a twin we're getting two point extra piety a month because our ruler is 
if our ruler was humble, we'd get one. And currently our ruler is actually calm here. This guy starts out as calm, which actually makes him a pretty good choice to reform a religion because he gets a large amount of piety. Another big piety gain that most people neglect is your religious counselor, basically, your priest. If you put them on religious relations, you get piety a month as well. The better level they are at learning, the higher it is. You want the best person in this position pretty much anyway. Um, but it is kind of annoying that you can't convert face or fabricate claims if you're trying to get piety. So don't expect to do a lot of conquering in the lifetime of your religion reformer. Uh, other ways to get it, um, the reason I picked this guy specifically is because this religion here has human sacrifice. Using executions for some religions can give you piety, and that is an immense bonus towards reforming your religion. Other ones here, like ancestor worship and related face, there's a couple other ones, uh, sorry, doctrines. Uh, you get extra bonuses when you do pilgrimages, which is really strong. How does one do a pilgrimage? Well, one goes under the decision tree, goes down to pilgrimage, and picks what you want to do. Um, if you're going to reform the religion, I recommend you click notify when this decision becomes available. That way you will always go on it. It's about a 10-year cooldown, or actually 15-year cooldown here. Um, the further you travel, the more piety you get. So if you want a lot of piety, you want to pick the longest journey possible. Um, you still get, a, I think it's like 250 piety for even a short journey. Plus, you can pick up traits. The I can't show you here, but the uh, pilgrim trait that they showed. Uh, actually, wait. Can I do that over here, actually? I'm wondering if I can get to it through here. Um, no. Pilgrimage trait has the same emblem as this. It has multiple levels. Higher level is the level 1, and I think level 2 starts giving you extra piety or a percent gain, making getting a pilgrimage Pilgrim, a very, very strong trait to pick up. Combining those two, if you need to, go down the health tree to make your ruler live longer. Own the three holy sites. Put your realm chaplain towards uh, religious relations. Do your pilgrimage. If you've got other ways to get piety and stuff, some people can do feasts. Some people can do other stuff. Uh, I will note that the... One of the few religions I've messed around with, the Slovakian religion here has ritual celebration. So you hold the feast, you get piety. So it's worth looking for religions that do stuff like that. These, the Tengri, Tengralism has uh, piety for ancestors, sky burial and stuff, which I'd actually make this a pretty easy religion to reform in some sense, because you can do pilgrimages for faith and you can do sky burials for faith. Um, just pointing that out. Um, yeah, let's get into some doctrines, I think. Um, so obviously you have your three tenets up here, and then you have got all your different doctrines. We'll go over the doctrines before we go into tenets, because the tenets are much more complex. So you've got your standard setup here. You can do, actually, we got to go into reform. So you got your main doctrines. What view is your gender? Um, if you go for male dominated, obviously female rulers dislike you. Go for female dominated, your male rulers dislike you. If you go equal, you can actually make it so that any type of ruler can exist in your realm without a huge penalty. If you're ever worried about having succession issues and too many daughters, this would remove that from in your any real threat to it in your entire game. It is important to note, though, the further away you go from your existing tenets of your religion, it's more expensive. So to stay with this, it would be 150 piety for the Reformation. If we swap to female-dominated, the cost would rise significantly. Just realize the further you move from your existing religion, the more expensive it's going to be. You can basically just do one single thing changed and then reform a faith for really cheap. Don't do it, though. You can only reform an existing faith once. If you reform again, it's a different religion, and then you have to convert all the land. Again, if you've already converted it. So just be aware, you want to reform your religion the way you want it the first time. Which is why I said it takes a full lifetime for a good ruler to do so. Over here, you got your religious attitude. If you're going to be relatively peaceful, this pluralist will help you. Specifically, I find the reduced danger from heresies when at low fever is really strong. Uh, you'll notice that 
Catholicism in particular tends to collapse into many different heresies currently. That's mainly because they, uh, they, they're triggering that event, basically. There's heresies that emerge when you're at low fever. This would slow it down. However, it does reduce your conversion speed, does reduce penalties from other religions. So if you're conquering a lot of land or you're going to be of different religions, might be somewhat more useful to have this. Righteous is kind of your, whoops, standard one here. You can revoke titles, opinion penalties, normal. It's fundamentalists that things get really interesting. So fundamentalists are basically your diehard committed fanatics. Pluralists are your less, are more laid back, tolerant religions. Fundamentalists, of course, people of other religions are going to hate you, but you're going to convert a lot faster and you can have a lot of heresies. So if you take this, um, you want to make sure you keep your fever high, which can be tricky because you, your fever goes up and down based off how you conquer. Uh, let's just glance at that. You can look into more detail about this, but basically small face have higher fever, large face lower, win holy wars, successful holy wars, increase it, stuff like that. Um, keeping it high is good, having it low, add, basically. <laughs> Uh, this is important too. This is how your clergy is going to roll. Um, if you have theocratic, all your temples are going to go to a va uh, priest vassal who's going to hold them and then pay you money and levies directly. If you do lay clergy, you can own temples, but then you have to count towards your domain limit. So it can be tricky. The important part is this decision here, clerical tradition, affects your head of faith. You can't do temporal unless you do lay clergy, then you can do it. Interesting enough, you can do lay clergy and still spiritual. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but if you want to be, have your reformer be the head of the religion, this is how you do it. Lay clergy, temporal. Um, you can also just, you know, have no head of faith, which is kind of interesting. I would not recommend it. It's doable and your fever can't go too far below, but you don't have a head of faith and there are benefits from having heads of faith. The definitely strongest way to do it is have a tempor uh, theocratic and spiritual head of faith because you can get gold from them, they get gold, and you can get claims. But if you want to be the head of your own religion, go, go lay clergy, go temporal. Down here you got your marriage doctrines. Standard stuff. I'm not really going to go through this this much. Important to note that monogamous, which a lot of people would say is a weak form, when you do a marriage with these, you get a chance for choosing gold or prestige, which can be very handy early on and over multiple generations obviously can earn you quite a bit of money. These ones obviously give you more children. Divorce, pretty useful. I, I've really never messed around with this that much. I tend to do always allowed. Must approve, you have to ask the spiritual head of faith. Eh, just do always allowed in that case. It's only a 50 piety difference. It's really not that huge. Uh, this one's important for you, bastardy. Uh, are you going to allow bastards? Are you going to be able to legitimize them or not? I would recommend never going no legitimization. One of the key things in this game is keeping your dynasty alive and always having an heir. With a bastard, you can always legitimize them and then get yourself an heir. Or you can run around seducing people, have lots of children, and then choose the right ones to legitimize. This one, all equally legitimate, can be good, but then you're going to end up with a lot of heirs. This one, if you want to do close marriage, that's a thing. You can look through all these. They, they do explain it pretty well in the tooltip here. It's relatively simple. Um, down here, the other doctrines, same sex. Interestingly enough, this is for men, not women. I guess it, they, game developers didn't stick it in there. Uh, deviancy, they have deviant traits. I actually haven't seen this, so... I'm like 200 hours or so into the game, still haven't come across this trait. Um, down here you got your adultery. I would recommend leaving them on criminal or shunned, to be honest. The reason for that, if you leave them on criminals, you can then, if you're the liege, which you're probably going to be the head of the religion and ruler of a kingdom, criminal allows you to be able to arrest more people. You don't have to arrest them if they're criminals. But arresting them, it's a free reason to arrest them. It's worth taking. You could do accept it if you don't want to deal with it. Witchcraft is interesting. Um, 
people can get the witch trait, and if you get enough witches in your family, you can form a coven, which then gives you huge bonuses, and there's other events associated with it. I haven't dabbled in it that much. Um, like, the Christian religions, they're criminals. Obviously, North Afri African, they're accepted. Down here, you've got your genders. Interestingly enough, your clerical gender does not have to associate itself with your view on gender. Kind of weird. You can have only male clergy, but you can have only women allowed to rule. <laughs> it's kind of strange. Uh, you've got your revocable stuff. This, again, is going to tie somewhat to... No, it doesn't. That's weird. I thought it did. Maybe it's a different one. It's very strange. I should have sworn it has to deal with this one. Ah, it does. Your head of faith cannot be... Cannot contradict this. So if you do, like, temporal for life, you can do all of them. But if you do spiritual, you have issues with being the head of the faith yourself. And obviously, clerical marriage is just going to give more people of your religion. The clergy can't inherit um, titles anyway. This one's cool, though. This is important to note. Clerical functions. You can get boost control. In fact, most religions start with control. Basically, speeds up your ability to control your lands. This one, though, the main taxes are lower, but you're going to have less revolts overall. If you're having to deal with a lot of peasant revolts and stuff, that's useful. I don't think you're going to have a lot of trouble with peasant revolts. I have yet to see a peasant revolt succeed. So there's that. This one's pretty good, though. You lose a little bit of faith, but you get levy reinforcement really high from your clergy. And your clergy also gets prowess. Uh, depending on your tenants, you can make your clergy um, have other benefits. But this one allows them to serve as commanders or champions, and they get four prowess. This is, can be pretty good if you're dealing with a small religion where you don't have a lot of... Um, Adherence to your faith, or you're going to be you're going to have issues spreading it initially. That would just give you additional commanders or champions. The cool thing about having clergy serve is when a clergy member dies in battle as a champion or something, they they're automatically going to be replaced with another clergyman. So you don't have to deal with uh, having your entire nobi nobility die in battle, which can happen. I think I lost. I think I lost seven dukes in one battle in one case. It was awful. Anyway, uh, down here are your virtues and sins. This is obviously going to be based off your um, doctrines and to some uh, doctrines to some degree, but mainly your tenets. Um, for example, like uh, actually we can't show it here. We're going to have to go into this. We do aestheticism. You notice the virtues and sins changed. It tells you what they are. So look into it. Read about it. You can, in fact, make all your what normally be sins, greedy, gluttonous, wrathful, arrogant, vengeful. You can actually make those all virtues if you want. You could have a religion where all the negative traits are positive and all the positive traits are negative. Uh, I will point out it's going to make it a little bit harder, mainly because the negative traits will still give you the negative um, penalty, as far as I'm aware. So let's start going down... Uh, tree and stuff now some of these doctrines are going to be locked based off your um sorry your tenants are going to be locked based off your doctrines i will point that out um that's why we went over the doctrines first obviously some of these are just based off of like criminal and stuff so you can choose them you cannot choose them so let's just run down them we'll go alphabetical adaptive you can read the description. Basically, harder for your lands to convert. They're less likely to have issues. Um, this one's actually pretty good if you're doing like a pluralistic religion where you're going to rule a lot of areas. Uh, India, for example, with the Dharmic face. That's pretty useful. Aestheticism. Meditation is really good for getting rid of stress. So it can be pretty useful in terms of getting piety. Uh, really good with some religions that have a lot of holy orders or can get them then you can get um, more faith and you can talk to your head of state uh, head of your religion one thing I like to do is Catholics in particular is get a lot of faith and then ask the Pope for money it's one of the easiest ways to make money in the game uh, that would be a way to do it for forming your own faith uh, astrology this one if you're gonna do a lot of naval stuff useful 
you can do some predictions. I haven't found it immensely useful, so I would rec say that's a relatively weak one. By and large, just look at what the cost is for the religion one to find the stronger traits. Paradox kind of told you what was good. This one's stronger than this one. If you're having trouble with children, this is the way to go. If you want to build a massive dynasty, that also helps. These ones, uh, I'm going to point out these syncr syncraticism ones. I probably said that wrong. These ones are kind of useful because they can lower the opinion or hatred of other faiths towards you. If you're going to have, like, if you're going to be bordering, like, Muslim or Christian or any religion's lands the whole game, and you want to interact with them, it might be worth taking one of these traits to make them hostile rather than evil. It's still not going to make them like you that much, but they're not going to hate you more. <laughs> it's, you can look into all the different levels of faith opinions uh, opinions and stuff. Um, suffice to say, evil is really painful. Hostile, a little bit less. I haven't found a great point. It's better to conquer and convert than otherwise, but it's still good. Uh, I'll go down some of these ones that I found particularly good. Communal identity slows down your conversions of different cultures, but within your own land, you're going to have good culture and good religion. Basically, they're going to be the same. If you convert the culture, it's going to convert the religion faster. It's slow to expand. But the big one here is same faith opinion plus 10. If you're ever going to worried about succession wars upon death and stuff or vassals revolting, this will make a big difference. 10 opinion is really strong. That's like equivalent 20 diplomacy on your chancellor. Really good. Uh, down here, communion deserves a specific mention because it's probably the easiest way to make money in the game. Probably. Yeah, I'd say it is. If you form yourself, so you're the head of the religion, right? So, um, we'll just, I think we can do it that way. Yeah, temporal, then we can look at this. You do communion, right? Head of faith may, oh, sorry, wrong one. Characters who've committed criminal acts may seek indulgences to gain favor for them instead. They can pay gold in exchange for, they can pay gold in exchange for piety. Basically, anyone who commits a crime or a sin in your land and you're the head of the faith can go to you and say, hey, forgive me, here's a ton of gold. Yes, this works for if you're, a, the head of the faith as well, you will get that gold. It's It can be really ridiculously good. You have a large religion, you can get thousand gold a month from it. It's 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 insane. It's really unbalanced right now. So that it's probably going to be a patch later on. Uh, this one right here, all about close family marriage. So might be something you're interested in. This one is worth mentioning. Um, Ecclesi Archie. I've said that totally wrong. My apologies. Uh, monthly fever per holy site held. If you're worried about having issues with heresies, like you've gone fundamentalist and you've got an increased danger from heresy, you may want to consider doing this. If you hold holy sites plus 0.1 fever a month, which doesn't sound large until you realize that your standard faith, a, a large one, it, you basically get like 0.3 a month. <laughs> So it's, it can be really good. You can basically, as long as you hold the holy sites of your religion, you can almost guarantee you're going to have high fever. So you're not going to have a lot of heresies pop up in your lands. Of course, if you lose it, this trait doesn't have a huge benefit if you don't own your holy sites. This one right here is probably one of the few that actually give you a um, all just virtues. It's kind of strange. Most 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 stuff that you get a virtue also gives you like a uh, a sin as well. This one actually doesn't. It's kind of unique like that. Some of these eh, righteous. This one's interesting because you can have other Gnostic faiths, not a B of your religion, but Gnostic as well, and they actually like you. It's it's really kind of strange. Um, it does give you additional learning at the cost of reduced stewardship. So if you're into having high learning, which is really strong, you could do that. Downside, you're going to have issues with domain penalties. Uh, I just mentioned that because it's pretty useful as well. Uh, this, these ones right here are for the Jewish and Muslim traits, just like the Christian ones. Legalism is interesting. If you're going to run a religion with a fair amount of virtues and sins, ideally you want the least amount of sins possible. Uh, it can reduce law costs. And if you're virtuous, people are going to like you and not join factions. So if you've got good, a good ethical family, this will help a lot. 
Um, it also helps with elective succession, this little line down here. More likely to devote for their choice of a liege if their liege is just. If you can keep your family just, you can tend to use elective succession to pass on titles in a group rather than having to do the whole partition shuffle of disinheriting, killing off people. It can be really useful. Mendicant preachers might be one of my favorite ones just for the increased conversion speed. If you're having issues converting countries, plus 33, I think that's 33%. Um, it could be 0.33 as well. I haven't actually looked into it that much. Really good at helping you convert. Also, you get bonuses when you complete pilgrimages. I believe it stacks with ancestor worship from the additional benefit. Benefit. So um, might be worth considering that as well. This one, if you want everyone not to wear clothes, you can do it. I wouldn't recommend you do it and then film it and put it on YouTube, but you could do it on your own games. Uh, this one, don't take it. <laughs> Basically, just don't take it. You can't do holy wars. You can't raid. People like you, but people also don't like you fighting wars. It's really... You want to fight wars in Crusader Kings 3, by and large. It's kind of the whole thing. This one... Um, some people would say pursuit of power is great because you get, you know, invasion on your neighbors, you get conquest. It's good to you look down here that all your direct vassals have a negative 10 opinion of you. Yes, a negative 10 opinion on all vassals. You're going to be dealing with a lot of revolts. I tried this. It's a mess. Uh, the ambitious as a virtue is nice. The problem is ambitious characters also have a penalty against you. So that doesn't even fully balance out the ambitious penalty. Right here. Opinion of Liege, negative 15. Opinion of this, plus 10. You have those two. You're still getting a negative 5. Plus, you don't like people as well. Don't do it. Uh, Reincarnation is kind of a strange one. Uh, you can get some pretty neat events from basically having your characters reincarnated. Um, but I found it's not really useful. Also, I'll point out that conversion resistance, while nice... If you're playing the game well, you really shouldn't be losing land of your religion to have to be converted, especially once you reform your religion. You're going to own all the reformed lands, basically. So this is you take this if you have a large empire, you reform, and you're going to lose most of your empire, but you want it to be your same religion. It, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. This one's good if you get an ethical um, ruler because you can condemn people. See these criminals, you can arrest them. Um, I found this half decent on the Muslims, the clan governments, just to revoke land from vassals. I suspect you could do it anywhere else. And there's other benefits up and down all around. Ritual hospitality here. This is where you get the... Um... Oh, actually, this isn't. This one's good if you want to generate piety, though, because you get piety per powerful vassal. And you can host people as a guest. Basically, it's like a higher way of doing sways and stuff. Um, it's pretty useful. You get increased opinion. It's rather cool. This one here right here is if you want to make um, like deceitful lying a thing. If you, want, if you really want to have fun, you could go all the way, make all the sins, virtues, all the virtues, sins, and then take this. And basically, your court will just be backstabbing each other all day. It's kind of amusing. Sanction false conversions. This one's interesting. Again, if you're losing face, the harder to convert, and they'll sometimes convert back. <sighs> kind of interesting, but you really shouldn't be losing land that you're worried about other people converting. This one is a trait that some of them start with, sanctity of nature. The popular opinion and the attrition and advantages can be nice. It's a very defensive um, thing, but the construction cost plus 10 gold is actually relatively painful unless you've got a lot of money um or you don't care about building your buildings really fast i wouldn't take this one but if you do uh you can be really defensive this advantage is really good especially in forests and jungles and obviously taiga so basically the outskirts of the map you get a bonus towards that sky barrels you get a small health boost if, if you really want to have your people rule for a long time and not have to deal with diseases, this could be a one, but there are much, much better traits to take. This one's basically um, a Muslim trait. Basically, if they're not of your faith, uh, they give you more money, but they 
give you less troops or the troops reinforce at a slower rate. On the same faith, they come faster. So if you own lands of the correct faith, you get bonuses. If you don't, you have penalties. But at the same time, you get more taxes if they're the different faith. Kind of a weird one. Um, I don't tend to take it. Here's the other one I mentioned sort of along the lines of the clergy being, a, you know, recruitment. The equivalent to that is, um, let's see, where were we? Unrelenting faith. They can serve as commanders or champions, plus four prowess. Faith hostility advantage. If you stack the two, you could have commanders with like plus eight prowess. Kind of cool. Um, but you'd be double stacking them, serving as commanders or champions. But this is just another way to get your clergy fighting for you if you don't want to do recruitment. Or vice versa. Warmonger, this is an interesting one. Basically, you always want to be attacking people. This is a way to get great holy wars in particular. So like crusades, jihads, that level of stuff. Um, but you have a penalty with your vassals that ticks up the less time you're at war. Um, you actually have to be like, fighting constantly which if you're trying to conquer a lot of land can be useful because people will like you more and you can do a lot of invasions if you're a real warmonger obviously take warmongering however there are some specific traits that are not available to um other face right here this uh, uh you can Acumenism. I've said that wrong and I apologize. You cannot custom create this one, uh, but basically it means the Catholic and the Orthodox faith initially. I don't, and it applies to insular. Basically, it means the Christian world likes each other better. Um, same thing with the Sunni and stuff. Um, basically, Sunnis get along better. Um, the bodies kind of get along. Es essentially, those are the benefits of it. It basically means the subdivisions in Islam tend to get along better. It's just kind of interesting. By all means, go look through all of this stuff. Like over here, you've got Dharmic Pacifism. They can't declare holy wars and raids. It's a different name. It's basically the same trait as some of the other ones. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Some of them have unique ones. Uh, like some of the Hindu ones here, they get this one. Pick a personal avatar to ven venerate. You can't pick that as a Christian faith. By all means, go look through it. Here's another interesting one. Um, struggle and submission. Uh, some religions you can take this on. Others you can't. I haven't actually looked down at all. It might just be the Muslims. Um, basically, you can declare holy wars again. <laughs> if you don't have a head of faith, though, you get to convert faster. So, kind of cool, interesting, random things. It's worth looking through all of them. You may find some religions that you didn't really know were a thing that could be cool. Like you've got Taoists hanging out over here. How many people knew the Taoists were on this map? Probably not a lot of you. They have the same thing with Head of Faith getting um, religion given to them. However, communion is not worth to take unless you actually have a Head of Faith. And the Taoists, are, oddly enough, are organized already. So you'd have to reform the faith to get the benefit. There's a lot. And there's a lot of different doctrines and ways to combine them all. You can do real holy one. You can do anti ones. Be aware you can only get three. It's really hard to change it. <clears throat> Some are much stronger than others. Some are much stronger than others. Some of them you never want to take. Other ones you do. Um, the other ones I should mention here. You got ancestor worship. This one's pretty useful if you want the additional splendor. Basically when your characters are born. And the long reign is nice. Your rulers aren't going to have revolts when they're older. Close family opinion is nice if you've got a lot of vassals of your close family, I guess. I, the problem is it doesn't really apply to like second cousins or more. Human sacrifice, obviously, piety instead of costing it, and you can raid. There's lots of little ones. Here's, oh, sorry. Here's the uh, Muslim equivalent to the domain tax things for different faith. It exists. Um, see, this one's just a renamed version of that one that gives fever per holy site held. A lot of them have, a lot of the religions just have renamed things. So, there's like pastoral isolation. Other Christian faiths are righteous. Conversion resistance. But the problem is the development penalty. There's a lot of really cool things. 
auspicious birthright basically ancestor stuff you could you could look through this forever some of these are just renames this one mothers and children are less likely to die actually it's not that bad it's pretty useful some of these things some of these obviously will form other religions in time. This one gives temple buildings faster and cheaper to make. If you can have lots of temples, it's great. If you don't, it's not that useful. This is the one I was looking for. This is a Christian one. Um, the Alexandrian Catechism. Monthly lifestyle learning experience plus 20. In my opinion, this is one of the stronger ones in the game for traits. You can only do it as Christians, if I remember. Um, monthly lifestyle trait, that is like what you get, how fast you progress to earn these traits. Like this one gets it 10% faster. You get that you're 30. It's really good. Um, basically you're going to have much higher traded characters. They're going to get further down their trees and stuff. Really quite cool. I, I just enjoy looking around Finding all these random things like Nestorism is tucked away. It's got a couple little provinces. It's really cool. I don't see the uh, Zunists from uh, CK2, but I got to imagine they'll appear at some point in a patch or something. It's quite cool. Basically, just enjoy yourself. Have fun with the religion. I've kind of given you the explanation of how to get a lot of piety and how to stack it. In my opinion, though, you really do need to go down this health tree unless you're going to do a small reformation just so that your ruler survives long enough. <laughs> it's, it's not a stretch to say that having your ruler live to be 80 is probably going to get you a better reformation than going down the theologian tree all the way before trying to get health. You're probably going to die before you do this. The difference between 60 and like 80 years old 20 years makes up for it in terms of piety but the key i found is the pilgrimage the focus keeping your theologian or your religious advisor on religious relations boosting learning's good actually i should make one small note you can have your spouse focus religion so um, patronage that will actually boost your specific piety gain it's kind of cool because it counts as your learning going up. Higher learning characters obviously get more prestige as well, or piety. So you want a high level learning character. So, um, actually, I should point out one last thing. If you're going to plan for having an heir to reform a religion, it might be worth going in, clicking on changing their education focus and putting them on learning just so they get that extra bonus and maybe they get like high level priest, which gets them tons of piety and everything. It's something to consider. Anyway, that's going to be it for this guy video. Hopefully this helps you with reforming your religion. By all means, ask questions and everything. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, check out the other guides I've done. And if you did like the video and you did watch it this far, please do click the like button and do, do subscribe. I do appreciate it greatly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.